Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the only one platform to build a beautiful online presence. I'm sure that many of you are fellow artists yourselves, and I think the really big highlight for Squarespace is being able to have a portfolio for all of your best work. And so for me, I have a various different series of illustrations that I like to kind of categorize together. In this case, I have a series where I did my monthly favorites for 2022 and 2023. And what is amazing is that you can actually edit the photos directly on Squarespace, which makes it so much more streamlined so that you can present your work in the most consistent and professional way as possible, which is important for me because I actually have to photograph my work as opposed to a digital artist, which you can just upload the file to. So if you're interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first website or domain. Hello friends. I hope that you've been well in case you are new to my channel or this series. I have embarked on a Zodiac portrait series for my Patreon page. So I had started out for the month of January, I did Capricorn. And then for the month of February, I did Aquarius. And for this month, I am working on Pisces. So I am very late, or I should say, cutting it really close to the end of the month here at the time of posting, but you do have a few days left to sign up for my Patreon page. If you would like to receive the Pisces reward, it will be a four by six print and a matching sticker with like a holographic uh, accent on it. And of course on my Patreon page, I also have exclusive videos, a podcast, lots of behind the scenes content. That's where I post a lot of the sketches and kind of preliminary stuff for these Zodiac portrait series over on there. So lots of goodies to check out if you're interested and you'd like to support me. But any case, we are jumping right into this painting here. I am using a wet on wet technique for this background because I really want the colors to feel really blended and just allows the paint to go on a little bit more evenly. But as someone who has spent many, many years primarily using cold press paper, I keep forgetting that with hot press paper, the watercolors don't spread and blend quite the same way as they do on cold press paper. So that is something that I'm continuing to have to kind of fight with or just remind myself of. For the Pisces Zodiac, I wanted it to be water themed because Pisces is a water sign and the symbols that are correlated to Pisces is fish. But I also didn't want it to compete or feel similar to Aquarius, which was the previous month. And with Aquarius, that symbol is a water bearer. So that also had a lot of water motifs. And so for with Pisces, I decided to go with a green and purple color palette, which is actually colors that are associated with this sign. And I really find this color palette quite unique and I quite enjoy it, but it's not a color palette that I'm quite as comfortable using. And it's not typically a color palette I associate with water. So there was that as a hurdle and a lot of other kind of challenging things about working on this particular piece, but I was really determined to stick to this color palette and try my best to avoid using too many typical blues, again, just to try and differentiate it from Aquarius. So as you can see, I'm going in with watercolors first, more or less just kind of laying down a lot of the base colors and also trying to get in some gradients, which I find are easier to do with watercolors typically. But again, because this is hot press paper, the gradients are definitely a lot more challenging to achieve. And also because this color palette is a little bit more contained in certain areas, like the character is very purple forward and the background is very uh, blue and green and aqua. I did have to paint around a lot of elements, which made it really tedious in trying to achieve gradients. I know that I could use masking fluid, but I don't have a lot of good luck with masking fluid. And especially I imagine it would be 
really challenging with hot press paper because I feel like that would just tear up immediately. So I just opted for painting around certain areas and then also knowing that I was going to use acrylic wash on top later on anyways. But yeah, with her skin tone, I knew that I wanted it to be a darker skin tone, but I decided that I wanted to go for a little bit more of a quote unquote unusual skin tone, which is much more kind of magenta purple leaning. And this is one of those cases where you really got to trust the process because I know it looks really strange initially, but that was another thing that is really beneficial for me with having a digital kind of mock-up first is just using that as my due north essentially to reassure myself that the direction that I'm going in should theoretically work. And something that I discovered while working on this illustration was the reminder that darker skin tones, even if it is an unusual kind of color like this, I find it much more challenging to do darker skin tones with watercolors. I think it must have to do with the fact that it just requires way more pigment and way more layers. And it's so it's more difficult to achieve the same blending that I normally do, I suppose, because I was trying to actually refer to my previous illustration of Aquarius in terms of how I did the kind of process with how much watercolor I took with the illustration and then how much I incorporated color pencil and then acrylic wash. And with the previous portrait, the skin tone was very, very fair. And I was actually able to render a lot of the illustration just in watercolors. Whereas with this illustration, I was finding that trying to do a lot of rendering with the watercolors just wasn't working the way that I wanted it to. You can kind of see that it's like very patchy and there's a lot of blooming that's happening because of the way that I typically paint with watercolors colors is with a lot of water. So I decided that, you know what, we're just going to abandon, you know, the process that I kind of had beforehand and just go with my gut on this. And so you can see I'm introducing the color pencils quite early on here. And again, because the base was already really uneven and colored pencils are uneven, it was just was not working. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go in with acrylic wash, even though this is so much sooner than I think I had introduced acrylic wash in the previous illustration, but I just had to go with what made sense for this particular illustration. And so I'm going in with gouache and this is when I kind of finally had that realization, I guess, or maybe not realization, but like acceptance that for me, darker skin tones are just easier to work on with acrylic wash. And I think it's probably because I just have more wiggle room with pulling and pushing the darks and the lights. Whereas with watercolors, you have to work from light to dark. And so there's just a lot of trial and error that has to happen when I'm approaching darker skin tones because they're just a little bit more challenging for me. And so, yeah, now I'm just having to accept like, just use acrylic wash if you're gonna be painting darker skin tones essentially. Um, but I do still like having a watercolor base just because it is a little intimidating to paint directly on white paper. So it is nice to just get those kind of first washes in. But this is why I always stress how my process is not linear and not conducive to a traditional tutorial because every single time I do an illustration, there is a learning curve, I feel like. It never feels like I know exactly what I'm doing. I constantly feel like I'm floundering for the majority of the illustration and then somehow it just slowly comes together. And as you can see here, like I mentioned earlier, I added in a lot of highlights for the face to really brighten up the kind of center and just bring more dimension to her, which is not something I would have been able to do with watercolors. And this illustration series, I'm really embracing working on the focal points 
earlier on in this in the illustration so you can see i'm putting in a lot of emphasis on the eyes even though there's a lot of the illustration that's not even close to being done yet and the reason why i'm approaching it this way is because the face is the most important part for this portrait and i feel like in order for me to feel confident in moving forward with the illustration I want to make sure that the face looks good and also maintain the original sketch as much as possible because as you can see with paints and especially acrylic wash you lose the sketch really quickly and I always find that I like the sketch more than the finished painting so I'm trying to introduce the darks and the line art and the really important features as early as possible. Here you can see how I go about blending the acrylic gouache. So it's kind of like slapping on a lot of different shades of paints that are pre-mixed and advanced and then sort of just making sure that you're working quickly while all these paints are still wet so that you can blend them together. And I'm essentially using like almost a hashing method. You can see I'm using like lots of little, little strokes, especially for those highlighted areas. And then either with additional wet uh, acrylic gouache or even with just the wet paintbrush that's clean from other paint, I'm able to blend out these colors. And again, because the layer underneath is not a water soluble paint, it's able to retain all the color underneath even though I'm doing a lot of like scrubbing and using a lot of water. I get a lot of questions from new artists who are like, which is the easier medium, watercolor or gouache or acrylic gouache? And it really does depend on the type of art that you're trying to achieve and the type of way that your brain likes to approach painting but I'm continuing to learn more and more that I think my method of painting is actually easier to achieve with acrylic wash. I find that watercolors are definitely not nearly as forgiving but there is a very special quality to watercolors that I just can't let it go. Um, so that's my answer for now in terms of which medium I personally find easier to use. But this is of course taking into account that I have been painting with these mediums for many, many years now. So even though I had decided with this Zodiac portrait series, I really wanted them to feel very mixed media with watercolors, gouache and color pencil. Because of the nature of how the kind of skin tone ended up turning out to be mainly acrylic gouache. That's kind of what ended up happening with this piece is that it's primarily acrylic gouache, which is fine. I think that ultimately I just have to go with my gut and what feels right for each particular illustration. And especially because this character design I chose has these sort of transparent sleeves that is something again that I found was going to be a lot easier to achieve with gouache and when it came to this character design like I mentioned before I really wanted it to be water themed but I didn't want it to feel the same or feel too similar to the Aquarius character and the Aquarius character her dress or top was very water and wave designed themed and so with this Pisces character because Pisces the symbol is fish I wanted to take that into account but with this zodiac series I'm trying not to go super literal with the symbols so I did not include any obvious fish symbols with this illustration and I know that some people don't love um, how I guess a lot of Pisces illustrations um, have the character as a mermaid. I'm not mad at a mermaid personally so I think with this portrait it can be interpreted that she kind of looks like a mermaid but it could also be a water nymph. It could just be some kind of you know ethereal water themed goddess type thing you know up to interpretation but yeah the little kind of gems hanging from her bust here have a little bit of a reminiscent of a seashell and then these 
transparent ruffled sleeves. They are similar to a fish or even a jellyfish maybe, just to evoke the idea of a water creature but not be super literal. And with Pisces, they are very romantic and I that's something that I really wanted to evoke with this character. So that's why I have her kind of looking up in a way from the viewer as if, you know, she's daydreaming and being caught up in her own little fantasy daydreaming land. <laughs> and then another thing that I included to be in line with being water themed and also romantic, I gave her a lot of pearl accessories because to me, so there's something about pearls that feels romantic, but also, of course, reminiscent of the water and the ocean. And I absolutely loved painting in these little baby hairs. I also decided to give her light colored hair because I wanted her to have like a darker skin tone. And with this Zodiac series, all of the kind of inner frame backgrounds are going to be black. So in order to have enough contrast between the character and that black background, I thought having the light colored hair would uh, create better contrast. And then when it came to the background, I was really struggling with the reference photos I was using, but also sticking to my vision for this color palette. And so something that I implore you to do when you're working on anything is to take photos during the process, like throughout the process, because sometimes when you're just like in the zone, you can lose the plot. And what I mean by this is that I wanted the background to be a little bit more on the pastel side, especially kind of around the top area, again, to give this romantic feeling. And also I just felt like color palette wise, it was gonna look more pleasing with the character being very pastel. Um, and the reference photos that I was using, of course, was of this underwater viewpoint of water lilies. And it's such a cool vantage point. And again, just makes it feel like the character is underwater and kind of gives the viewer something to see like what she's potentially looking up at. But I started to get too caught up in trying to be more photorealistic or capture all these details that I was seeing in these water lily photo references, but realizing that wasn't serving the actual illustration because the focal point we want to be is the character and the water lily pads were just like getting way too detailed and it was distracting. And I also didn't like the super yellow green colors for them in conjunction with the rest of this color palette because the character is wearing a much more kind of teal seafoam color and this illustration already has a lot of different colors happening in it and so the reason why I purposely made the character wearing and incorporating all these like teal elements is so that it tied into the background and so you'll see that I end up repainting a lot of elements in the background which I thankfully noticed that I needed to do because I had taken photos earlier on when it was just the watercolor stage and I much preferred what the color palette looked like when it was a lot softer and more pastel so that's something that I found really beneficial with having taken photos throughout the process and seeing where you've overdone certain things or how it, the illustration has morphed to something that doesn't work anymore. And that's actually a piece of advice that I don't know if gets talked about enough is the fact that as an artist, so much of what you're doing is problem solving. And what I mean by that is making these, you know, color or design choices based on how it's going to best serve your vision and what you want the viewer to see and be feeling when they look at the illustration that you're working on or the piece that you're working on. 
And so, yeah, that's something that you have to be able to adapt to is being flexible with your initial vision or what you initially thought you wanted out of the illustration and being able to accept that maybe what you initially thought isn't going to work or be able to, yeah, essentially just problem solve your way through certain things that just aren't working. And so that's why I've been really embracing the mixed media kind of approach to my illustrations now, as opposed to feeling like I have to only use one medium and then feeling like I'm, you know, cornering myself if something goes wrong. And so, yeah, here you can see this is where I just completely paint over the lily pads essentially with this sea foamy color but it's a very watered down acrylic wash that way i'm not losing all of the detail i'm just basically kind of like when you use a digital uh, program and you put like a transparent color overlay on it that's essentially what i'm doing with this but in a traditional media with a really watered down acrylic wash and that's like a huge benefit to this medium is being able to do those kinds of glazes without really disturbing the layer underneath and that way we're not losing all of those you know details but we're making it a lot softer so that it's more actually like receding into the background as opposed to being distracting from our main focal point which is the character and as I mentioned before, I didn't want the character to be super obvious in terms of signaling to fish, but I did include teeny little fish shape earrings for her, just as a small nod to the symbol for the zodiac sign. So yeah, after these, you know, little, little touch finishing touches on the line art and some highlights and adding in the silver metallic ink and painting that black background in which I didn't film because I was just running out of time. This is the final illustration. It was definitely a really challenging one but after I took the tape off I came to like it a lot more stepping away from it a little bit. I am enjoying it the more I look at it. So anyways you have until the end of the month March 31st to sign up to my Patreon page if you would like to receive this piece in the mail and I hope that all of you Pisces out there enjoy this illustration. I hope you feel well represented here and yeah look forward to next month where I will be painting Aries which is a fire sign which I'm pretty excited for and yeah thank you so much for supporting me here on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, all those things really do help out the channel and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!